ولو انا deliver the message regarding me even if it is one verse is there one thing you know about islam share it is there not a single thing that you know about islam not one thing you can talk about islam then you better get lost you are dead wood on the house of the ship of islam we are carrying you dead wood you don't know one thing you can talk about islam something one thing man about your hygiene huh i understand that our khalid balala you know she made some remarks about the president you know that he doesn't wash his backside and how can he be the president <laughs> look one thing man one thing you know don't you know your hygiene we are the most hygienic people with all our poverty we are the most hygienic people we are the most hospitable people wallah we are talk about it man talk about something that you know about islam huh? if you don't know about theology about psychology about philosophy you know have the quran don't worry do you know one thing about islam any one thing you can talk man open your mouth as soon as you start talking about one thing that one thing again and again allah adds more this is how knowledge increases this is how i got my knowledge you know i didn't go to university to learn the bible darul ulum to learn islam no nothing just doing talking 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 and problems problems and the problem is created and i get the solution problem is created so my knowledge increases same thing secret with you our nabi said balligh anni wa law aya deliver the message regarding me even if it is one verse go to town my dear brothers and sisters you know something that you know to us learn to talk and as soon as the guy poses a problem for you you will be looking for the answer and when the answer comes you will be able to retain it like this i can keep on throwing things at you facts 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 this is more in- mere entertainment you <laughs> Oh. You go home and it's forgotten. I said, Mr. Tijak gave a fantastic lecture. What did he say? <laughs> so we don't know what he said. <laughs> no, no. Just one thing, pick it up and go to town. The Christian, he hasn't got a leg to stand upon. It's the most nonsensical religion on earth. Most nonsensical. Adam and Eve eat the apple and we all go to hell for that. The most nonsensical religion on earth. And that guy is getting converts. And we are not getting converts with the Quran. simply because we are not talking jazakallah for this opportunity wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alamin if there are any questions this mic is here uh, please come forward so that it can be recorded and please lift up your legs come forward ask whatever questions you have and i will answer them please come forward come forward anybody any questions the others can get up to you know start walking start walking so we don't have to wait when this man finishes and he sits down and then we wait for somebody else in the meantime lift up your legs come forward and come forward here in the front come brother come brother <coughs> come 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 my brothers come 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 man get up if you can't stand before your grandpa your uncle your grandfather how are you going to stand up before a christian i want to know huh? how are you going to face the nasara when you can't face your uncle your grandfather come 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 yes ma'am in the mic my question is that get near 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 the mic get near to the mic get near to the mic also no no that looks strong like that my question is if your brother a christian can ask you such a question that how come that a good thing can come from uh, evil evil thing which way i don't choose to explain to that person so that you make him satisfy about your answer so that he can get ready to uh embrace islam islam that's my question you see that guy sit down sit down that guy has come for a fight he doesn't want knowledge he doesn't want guidance he wants to score points to make a fool out of you in front of all the people mr d dad how can anything good come out of you he wants to make a monkey out of you so you deliver another lecture that's what you want me to do philosophy psychology physiology the physiologically there's nothing wrong with the child psychologically there's nothing wrong with the child theologically there's nothing wrong with the child but the end the guy says no 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 mr d dad how can anything good come out of evil now you see that sickness the sickness so for that he needs a sledge hammer hmm oh this philosophy and psychology and fondling it won't help so you turn the tables 
for him. So now you tell me, this is what you tell me, that your Jesus died for the sins of mankind. He's the son of God. Hmm? So out of that murder of God's son, you say he came Jan Jannah. You tell me now how, thing, how can anything good come out of evil. Finish. It's function. So you don't start delivering another lecture. Then another guy comes on you do another lecture. No. If you can turn the tables there and then, sledgehammer, give it to him, carry on. Move on. There's work to be done. Right. Next one. Come this side. Come this side. Uh, my question is about uh, the satanic verses. I've, I've had problems, you know, people asking me why, why you Muslims, why do you want to kill uh, Suleiman Rashid? What are your reasons? Uh, and it is a problem to me to answer that question because when I haven't read the book, I'd like you to advise me. If I get the chance, can I read the book? Is it is for me to read that book? No. You see, it depends now. So, the brother is asking a question about Salman Rushdie. Though he is not in competing, competition with us, the Christian is, but he's asked a question. People are asking, people are very clever. This is Salman Rushdie, he has a right. Freedom of speech. So we agree. Every man has a freedom of speech. I, have, I want freedom of speech to be able to talk to you. I don't want to be gagged. Khalid Balala don't want to be gagged. Salman Rushdie don't want to be gagged. Fair. Fair request. Freedom of speech. But now, freedom to abuse. I'm asking, who are you? You are an African? Yeah. Right. So now, if you were an African asking me that question, you know, you are asking me, not as a Muslim, but as an African, you want to know, you Muslim followers, why are you so sensitive and all that? So I said, you know, the Rushdie fellow, what he calls you black people, you guys. He says, black men eat white men shit. I'm quoting you his satanic verses. You people eat white men shit? Oh. No. So now the guy who tells you that you black men, says, then black men eat white men shit, he says, but he doesn't eat black shit. You know, you hate black shit, but you eat white men shit. Uh, so he's a white man, he's asking me, I said, you know what he says about you? About your mother? Rushdie, what he said about your mother? Your wife, your daughter, you know what he says? He said, white women, I'm quoting, I'm quoting him now to the white man. He says, white women, never mind fat. Jewish, means with a poly nose, crooked nose. Jewish or non-differential. You can't make out the difference between one and another. They are four, he used the four letter word, and thrown away. I say, you bastard, is that what's your mother's role? Hmm? That's what he's telling the whole world, that this white woman, your mother, your sister, your wife, your daughter, whether she's fat, She's Jewish or non-differential, you can't make out the difference, she is for... You use the four-letter word. You know what that word is. For that and being thrown away. Is that your mother's role? Your sister's, your daughter's role? He said, where's the pastor? Where is he? He wants to kill him. You see, the trouble is, bulk of our people... Now, I don't say it's for everybody to read. This bloody rubbish, waste of time. He uses that four-letter word 52 times in his book. In combination with every letter of the alphabet. I can't, I can't, in this, in this place, I can't tell you, you know, <laughs> that four letter word, 52 times, one for each week of the year, he uses that word. Then he also prohibits the Queen of England. He has sex with the Queen of England. I said, you know your Queen, you're British. Yeah? That guy is having sex with your Queen. Hmm? He said, but no, it's only a dream. I said, the bastard, when he wrote it, he was not dreaming, was he? When he was he dreaming? Was he dreaming when he wrote the book? No. So, see, the trouble with our people is, I saw, I saw it on TV, in America, one of our leading men. What? Ah, there's this, there's a videotape on the subject. Of how Rushdie fooled the West, that's for you. Right. So, I'm watching the TV, American TV, the Muslim fellow is called up, uh, by the interviewer, and 50 million people are watching. And the interviewer is asking, what did Rushdie say? And the man says, you see, he used filthy, dirty language, so what did he say? And this guy, who is being a Muslim, he knows, he told his wife and his mother and his daughters, he said, look, I'll be on TV, you better watch 8 o'clock, CNN. 
right? So he knows his mother is watching, his sister is watching, his daughter is watching, and now this guy is asking, what did he say? He can't say. He can't utter the words. You know, he can't say what he said because his mother is listening. The guy is insisting, what did he say? And the camera zooms on to him that you know it brings the, your picture you can see your wrinkles and you know what is happening to you. the camera is a killer you know the guys brought you there and everybody in everybody's house is watching you you know how you're reacting <laughs> then guy he said he said Ben Chod <laughs> 50 million people they heard huh? what did he mean to them American 50 million American heard that so the guy used the word Ben Chod <laughs> what these guys who understood, they're laughing. But all my Swahili brothers, what did they understand? Nothing. If I was there on the on, on the TV, I said, You want me to tell you what it means? So she's going to say yes. I say, You mean sister? Just your bastards. <laughs> That's what he says. You, you American. You mothers. And you Britishers. Your sisters. This this is what he says in his book. So now, if you know, you turn the tables. That's what it says about you, sir. You Englishman, you sisters, you bastards. And you Americans, you sisters, you bastards. That's what Drushi says. Is it true? Hmm? You want to promote that book? You want to promote that book? Now you tell him what he's telling about you. You Jew, what he's telling about you. You Negro, what he's telling about you. You Paki, what he's telling about you. Pakistan, you Chinese. He's got everybody there. The Hindu god Rama, he's, he's a lecherous fellow. The god of the Hindus. I said, the Hindu guy is asking, he says, you know what he calls your god Rama? Lecherous. And your Sita, he uses flighty Sita. Flighty. You know, a woman that, and she can fall for you. That is your goddess. So, I said, man, that guy is lampooned everybody. And you want to defend him? He swore my mother, but now you see, when you talk about your mother, Kumul, Kumulin Asha Siddika is a joke. Your mother, where is your mother? She's dead. Is it hurting her? It's a joke. But now talk about his mother. You, your mother, your wife, your sister, your daughter, and you see how he reacts. So from that angle, if you want to study it, but it's too late now. The guy is already so on his way out. You know? But you'll enjoy the trip. This is in the Royal Albert Hall, London. Pleasure. To tell the brothers and sisters to fight for their rights in this world. No, it's not an offense. So, if we are afraid of fighting for our rights in this world and in this country, where we can fight for it? <laughs> you got the answer. Are we, are, 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 we, are, we, are we afraid of God or of men? No, 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 no. You got the answer. You got the answer. You're already. In your question, you're telling the answer. We want yeah. to do this. <laughs> we want to do this. We are afraid of men. How about tomorrow, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Sure, sure. No, no, I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with you. Masha. Yes. Next. Next. Yes. Come, my son. Right. Silence. editions coming in and out. One edition goes out of date, a new edition comes in. Are there so many Jesus Christ coming in every now and then to revive the editions? And when Mr. Dida is uh, referring to the Bible, what edition are you referring to? Inshallah, tomorrow morning we are having a, a combat kit, a course of how to give battle to the Nasara. How to give back to me? A two-hour course. That's a tomorrow morning special course. There are only about 25 people can come. Not the hundred, not the two hundred. Only 25 because we can handle a class, a class of 25. And I would like you to give your name to Mr. Abdullah before going. You see, preferably those who have Bibles. That means they know something about the Bible. You know. We can carry on from there. With regards to the Bible that I'm using, generally I use the authorized King James Version of the Bible. Basically, all the Bibles are the same. 
There's a variation of words, language, but the game that you are talking about, I just discovered this evening. You see, we are going to give a Bible each to our students, you know, work out with a combat kit inside and how to do the job. One of the facts that I was marking this evening in the new Bible, it says that God killed 50,070 persons for looking into a box. 50,070. So I'm reasoning with the Christians. I want you to reason with the Christians. Then let's say me, Ahmad Didad, I have a box placed there, and he says, anybody looks into the box, I'll kill you. Okay? I'll kill you. Anybody looks into the box, I'll kill you. Now, the first guy who goes and looks into the box, I say, hey! Shh. Shh. He remembers. I say, sorry sir, please forgive me. He knows I'm going to kill him. So if I'm kind and merciful, I'll forgive him. But I'll save all you people. Because I, if I allow him to go, see, and the next guy, and the ne I'm watching, I'm watching, and I'm going to kill everybody. I'm God. I'm going to kill everybody. And I allow you, I have allowed 50,070 persons to look into the box before killing them all. I'm a loving father. Is this a loving father? That's right. Hmm? The loving father is the first one who made me say, Hey, you, what do you like? Check. Sorry, sir. Sorry, Baba. Please forgive me. I won't do it again. So I saved 50,069. Even if I kill that one fellow. As an object lesson, which I shouldn't do. But I'm still saving 50,069. 50,069. But this merciful God of the Christians, in the Bible, he killed 50,070 persons for looking into a box. Now the latest Bible, we'll see tomorrow. The latest Bible, they just bought it from Mombasa today to give to our students. It is called the Revised Standard Version. So I opened up that page, 50,070, it says only 70. 50,000 they attack. <laughs> Between this Bible and all the Bibles in the world and this one now, latest, they act solo 50,000. But in the footnote they put in Hebrew, it is 50,070. But now in the next one, they heard these are saying that look, they played the game from the main text, they retained 70, and the 50,070 they brought in a footnote it says in Hebrew it is 50,070. Next Bible that comes out, that 50,070 will be taken out and only the 70 will remain. So it's a game that they are playing. But generally, whatever I'm speaking is in every Bible. Every Bible. Different variation of words, terminology, but it's the same. Basically. Two more questions. Two more questions. Two more. Last two questions. Last two. <laughs> I've been testing questions at my company and the same question I'm testing at working with my brother and sisters. Tend to ask me and they presume to be right for Jesus because they say Jesus said even more. <laughs> Jesus said a miracle. What was Muhammad having? Secondly, Muhammad was buried, but Jesus was not. So I'm standing on one time. Right, right. Jesus performed many miracles. No hesitation. No hesitation in accepting that. He gave life back to the dead. He healed those born blind and the lepers with Allah's help. Accepted. Accepted. What miracle did Muhammad perform? You see, the miracles of Jesus are in the book. They are in the book. You can't reproduce them. You can't reproduce those miracles. Jesus turned water into wine. He turned water into wine at the marriage feast at Cana. He made people drunk. Can any Christian do that today? No. He killed 2,000 pigs. 2,000 pigs he destroyed. Can any Christian do that? Killing 2,000 pigs to heal one man? No. He killed a fig tree from his very roots. Can anybody do that? No. But now, say, look, great miracles, great miracles. These miracles are all in the book. Whether they were true or false, they are all in the book. The miracle of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the Quran, the living Quran, is ever with you. 
everybody has access to it and you verify it today you read it and you know that this is your Lord talking this is not the work of Muhammad Muhammad didn't do this job and each and every little thing that if you study it you find that each and everything is telling you that this is Allah's Kalam this is Allah's Kalam and this is the miracle of miracles it's another subject I've been expounding at times Al-Quran the miracle of miracles but tonight was not the occasion for it inshallah the next time when I come we might expound it Al-Quran the miracle of miracles the second question was the second question was what was the second question all right right so Muhammad is buried and Jesus is lofted so that makes Jesus greater that's what the Christian is trying to say. I said, look in your book, Elijah. Elijah was taken up into heaven by a whirlwind without dying. And he's there for 3,000 years. He's in heaven without dying. Who is greater? Jesus, according to you, he was killed on the cross. And after three days, he was resurrected. And after 40 days, he was taken up. Okay, okay. Okay, what you say we accept. Elijah is there for 3,000 years, not dead yet. Who is greater? Elijah or Jesus? This man, your Jesus had to die. That man didn't die. He's taken up alive. Elisha, he was taken up alive in your Bible. So are you prepared to say that Elijah is greater than Jesus? Elisha is greater than Jesus? He says, no. So why not? Why do you make fish of one and far of the other? If this is your standard, going up to heaven is makes him superior, then the other guy who was there before him for 3,000 years is superior to him without dying. Right, next one. Okay, uh, my question is, okay, so that's, 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 my question comes from the, in the Bible, the, in the book of John, as Jesus, uh, uh, says, uh, it was the prediction of the spirit of the truth. When we talk to Christians, they generalize that uh, it's not the spirit of the truth, but the Holy Spirit who came in the day of Pentecost. I don't know when the disciples were in a certain room of this and they came something happened to them I, when I talk to the Christian they say you don't know how to interpret the Bible because you don't have the Holy Spirit I want to know how to read this Holy Spirit and the Spirit of the Spirit you see you ask the Christian he says he says John chapter 16 verse 7 it says there nevertheless I tell you the truth it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I go, I will send him. In Arabic, Salakinni akulu lakumul haqqo, innahu khairul lakum, in antalika, li allahu illa mantalik, la yatikumul muazzi, walakin in zahab tu ursilhu ilaykum. He makes it a condition that he must go before the comforter will come. If he does not go, the comforter will not come. Is that so? is a conditional thing he must go before the comforter comes this muazzi in arabic in the arabic bible al muazzi jesus must go before al muazzi will come it's conditional he said yes but the coming of the holy ghost is not conditional your bible says your bible says you tell me your bible says in the gospel of saint luke that elizabeth had the holy ghost before jesus was born elizabeth had the holy ghost before Jesus was born. John the Baptist had the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. Before he was born, from his mother's stomach, he came out with the Holy Ghost. Then Jesus Christ, when he went out on his mission of preaching and healing, with whose help was he preaching and healing? If not the Holy Ghost, he agrees. His disciples were preaching and healing with whose help? The Holy Ghost. Then before he parted, he told his disciples, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive. Take it. Was he bluffing? Was he bluffing? No, he couldn't be bluffing. He said, receive that they must have received. So it makes no sense. He said, if I don't go, he won't come. But if I go, I will send him. He's not talking about the Holy Ghost. He's talking about another person like himself, a comforter like himself. Right. Next one, the last one. This is the last one. This is the last one. Uh -huh. uh, sometimes back I went to a Christian meeting and uh, sometimes back I went uh, for a Christian meeting and uh, we met some uh, missionary. So on his topic he talked about uh, Christians. Are you aware of the uh, Muslims? And while he was talking, 
he used to uh, somehow scorn the Muslims a lot. He used to insult them a lot. But uh, I must confess, due to the lack of my knowledge, my knowledge I couldn't answer most of his questions. And uh, he gave us this uh, booklet, or pamphlet, which has very many questions which I, will not, which I cannot uh, ask all of you. So I just ask one of them and ask Mr. Medida if it is if you can answer them for the rest of the day. Who is uh, greater than Jesus and why? Who is greater than Jesus and why? Now, we say, you give us a standard. You give me what makes Jesus the greatest. What? Ask him. What makes Jesus the greatest? What? So his birth. He was born without a father. I said, right. So Adam was born without father and mother. <laughs> that Melchizedek had no father and no mother, no beginning, no end. Greater than your God, Jesus. Oh, Jesus gave life back to the dead. So that in your Bible you read, the other prophets, they also gave life, life back to the dead. Are they greater than Jesus? Moses, he gave life to a dead stick, which is greater miracle than you reviving the dead. If a person offers faint, faint here. And we don't know whether he's dead or alive. You call a doctor and the doctor certifies him dead. Because the guy's dead. Prepare for burial. But when you look at that dead corpse, that body, you still think maybe the guy's breathing, man. Maybe he's still alive. Maybe the doctor made a mistake. And somebody else comes around and says, hey, wake up, man. And the guy wakes up. It's a miracle. But there's more likelihood of that man waking up than a dead stick becoming a serpent and eating up all the other snakes of the Egyptians, which is a greater miracle than giving life back to the dead. Because an inanimate object, a dead wood, you put life into it, make it animate, animate and animal-like, and does all his job, eating up all the snakes of the Egyptians and back again into this form, which is a greater miracle, that of Jesus or Moses. So at every step, you say Jesus is great. What makes him great, man? Greater than the other prophets. And we show you that in every case, there is somebody greater than him. Yes. The salvation is means the good acceptance of Allah. What did Jesus say? What did your Jesus say? He says, verily, verily I say unto you. Most assuredly I'm telling you. His disciples, his people. Verily, verily I say unto you, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Unless you are better than the Jew, there is no heaven for you. Did he say that? Did Jesus say, unless you are better than the Jew, there is no heaven for you? Did he say that? Did he say, he is not of me who does not take his cross and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. Means do what as I do, if you want to go to heaven. And the man who comes along to him, he says, good master, what good thing must I do to gain eternal life? So Jesus says, why callest thou me good? There is none good except one that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Means life eternal, keep the commandments. So Islam teaches you the same thing. Keep the commandments of God. Believe in Allah and do His bidding.